Good back to everyone. Um, up here is a little bit slow, sorry. So, uh, this. Yeah, is she coming in? She's coming. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, is she going to join online? Is she going to? No, I'll do. Okay, no, that's okay. If that's okay. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. I just, yeah. I just sort of, she wants to join online. No, no, no. I didn't actually knew that that was a possibility. Okay. No, that's okay. Good. Good. Anyway, well, um, I'll hand the meeting over to um, Captain Brooks for inspirational reading for the day. Very short, very straight. You can learn from the past. You always got to look forward. Thank you. Um, we're going to have our lunch at twelve o'clock today. Um, and you're welcome to stay if you want to want to stay for that. And um, I'll just move on. Any apologies? No, nothing. At least today. Any declarations of interest? In today's agenda? No. We'll pop over to the public forum if that's okay. If you want to take a seat. Um, good morning, Council staff and members of the public. I am today supported by Crystal Beach, who's just going to have a few words as part of my speech. And I'm also filling in for Carol Quirk, who this morning tested positive to COVID. Okay, so this is her writings, but I'm going to pull support on it. When a month ago I asked to be heard at today's meeting, I was going to urge you not to cut the hours of the library or of eyesight or merge them. It now appears congratulations are in order. If reports are to be believed, that these core services will not now be cut or merged. I have decided to speak, however, to make sure that such suggestions never happen again. You will engage the feeling of the community in the last week. So, you had lost the community on this topic, so the decision you make today is so very important and must be to confirm the core services library and by site stay as they are and perhaps even expand. Nothing in the PGF applications talks about a half a time library. The library is our community hub. A library in 2024 is so different from one even 10 years ago. 38,000 users went in and out in a six month period last year, and users are quite different. People go in to get help with the internet, help with scams, use the meeting rooms, wait between appointments if they are rural. Do homework, play the piano, get help with job applications, look at the artwork, especially tourists, make friends, etc. Take part in school holiday programs as well as get out books and magazines. I wonder if you're aware that three of our schools don't have libraries at present. Currently, we have 660 signatures on a petition to keep this library full time. And in terms of the eyesight, Residents love the events it puts on, and people can't afford to take their kids to Whakatane if we don't have any here. While I go to the library for books and a chat, as I lived alone, Crystal Beach will talk to you about who she believes the library is paid for and why it is important. What in that? What in that? I'm going to be a bit short on the What in all our. Members of the Wurugi District Council, from assets, you have more white time over to Capital. And that's how Matu and Lats, Lats, we have myself, Crystal Beach, and this is our Ruby Roach. We would like to offer our kind regards and appreciation concerning our library and finding solutions to work with our people of Wurugi and hearing what they have to say. You know better than your people to know where to guide you towards and our belief. Um, our local library house, our classes were we in this space last year, so we had no building for six months. And working with our partner at Upukuri, they housed our library, and we kept our adult classes in. And our library welcomed us with um, open arms. We found out home, and the, the staff were impeccable, and the knowledge was impeccable to our library. It is the people that our library do look towards. Our people that help us, especially within the library, 
We need to make sure it is an open place for them to be able to feel welcome and to know that they are invited and welcome. We actually saw, I actually was the person that was positioned my way out of at that time. And I saw um, so many schools coming. And um, our college, our youth schools, our primary sections, and just came in and uh, they love the place, they make it. It's, it's not home from home, but I suppose the home for the books, the funny book for the hey, knowledge is house, a lot of history in our by our nephews, Lydia Morgan, that is beautiful, that space, that is crazy cool and informative. Um, we see our councillors who work to um, who endeavour to work for our people in the community. We acknowledge their time and effort and collaboration it takes to make decisions that work for ratepayers and the Puriki community of the collective. So a huge number and it's not an easy job. We see that. Um, thank you for your decision to hear the people and their concerns. And thank you very much for my three me, and for Kara. Thank you very much. Welcome to stay for the meeting. Yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. More about us on for that. Yep. Yep. Sorry. Um. Kia ora, um, kia ora um, I'm Maxi Kimura on the Coast Ward um, for the Council. Um, and I suppose, and thank you for, for your words this morning and understand that Carol's not here this morning and maybe, I'm not sure if you can answer or whether Carol can or not, but um, I look at, we all um, get um, the sense of the importance of the library to this community. Um, and when I look through our notes here today, there's about 36 pages of just related to the library itself and our and our agenda today. But um, at no stage did any of us councillors agree to reducing the hours. So my question is, um, and I don't know if Carol can answer this, is um, how does she get her information so wrong? So because because obviously there's a lot of a lot of debate there. So yeah, and sorry, and just secondly. Um, can't go too much into it, but um, you'll see the ones that have got the agenda, we go into in committee later on. And then, but when the workshop notes are released from the 30th of January this year, you'll see what we've discussed, and there's nothing in there to say that we've, we were going to reduce the hours as the council, council is. So, um, so it's not a, 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 an attack or anything, it's just a question, really, just a general question from my, my point of view. So, yeah. Uh, you can read the report. Uh, Kia ora. Uh, Kia ora. My name's Ivor Jones, uh, community Kira. member who's uh, been supporting this co op mm. um, You can read the report if you need it. Yep. Yep, so it's all in there. Mm. So that's how we found out yeah. that this stuff is going on. Yes. To the report to news. Yeah. You've got Mike Bleacher, you've got Diane McCartney. Yeah. That's how. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, that's it. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Probably wasn't this question that Carol could have answered anyway, but it will, will be quite clear later on. Um, mm. If services work up at that is obviously a consequence of, of cutting back the services, but uh, yes, yeah, cutting to 20 hours was, was not a suggestion from the day. Any, any member, elected member, just just a reassurance on that. And just one point on the, um, I just want to comment on the college not having a library. I think it's a great disappointment. Uh, I'm just talking with some of your whanau, and that was a beautiful library. Um, and you know, it, it, it's great. It was a great tool for those of us that um, waited to the last minute to pass an exam. <laughs> and, and I've also, um, Nithia was a, um, a tool in our community, and I can remember visiting a few times in there and getting told off for being noisy. Um, so my grandmother was the librarian at the college, and to see that fantastic building not being used as a library. Mm -hmm. um, very disappointing for me because it's a safe place for kids to go and live. So, yeah, totally agree with that with the library. Yeah, what it does. Thank you. Thank you. It's fantastic that you're saving this one. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, we'll move on. Um, confirmation of the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, <laughs> 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 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We're on page 19. Uh, just can we just have a minute from last year? Because I remember most of said, uh, Council Book brought up that if we wanted to put access through the white groups, that councils could do that. It was stroke of the pen. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, Tom, but you didn't have yep. it. It's um, it was on the top that. It's on the top of this. Um, yeah, at least I think where it was, but it's the uh, the That will be because we have a very serious situation there because we don't want to see four wheelers having to drive out of the state highway, especially with children on board, and it's, waiting, it's an accident waiting to happen. It needs, it needs resolving, that's all. Okay. There's no quick solution there on the break. Um, I can't remember. You're up for that? Yeah, yeah, but uh, this round is going to get the result that you need. Yeah, the result won't be a quick one. Still moving forward on it. Okay, we're on page 19. Look for risk insurance meeting. I'm just going to do a little. Questions or comments? All right, I'll, I'll move. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll move this one if you want to. I'll take it. Yep. Yes. In, in regards to the case of the meeting, um, yeah, there was there was a couple of awesome um, completion um, funding application completion reports. Uh, we hadn't been getting a lot of them in the past, um, and processes have changed now. So to find out, new couple haka since a. Um, an awesome completion report with um, photos and all, as well as the Māori Girls Charitable Trust. So the board acknowledged that we are um, very appreciative of that, um, given that we get $50,000 a year to distribute to the local community. Um, yeah, so it's nice to get that positive feedback. So. Thank you. The uh, festival that was held just recently, it was a great success. So I think yeah. it's... Uh, on the, on, the, on the performance um, last year? Yeah, most definitely. Well, the work went into that, and we did congratulate uh, Linda Steele, one of the Coast Community Board members, um, on the hard work that went into that. So um, she was, in, I think, in much needed rest um, after that. So, yeah, it was a wonderful weekend. So, yeah. Okay. Um, any questions? Yeah. Okay. in favor? Aye, aye, aye. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Move on to page 33. Minister of the Strategy and Planning Regularly. Regular Planning Committee meeting 21st of August 2023. Is that right? Yeah, wrong. Well, October. It's not a dense, it's more writing. Um, 
Frau Rivers war das Motion. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 He's given an update there, and um, he talks briefly about um, State Highway 2, Wainui Road to Aporiki, um, our waiting fund, but there's no mention of State Highway 2, Wairika Gorge, or uh, State 35. And I'm quite, I, I, I know I seem pushy on this, but he was the one that zoomed in once we got elected 18 months ago, and he spoke a really good talk on his Zoom about how the priority was State 35 and State 2. Yet we'll see nothing really from him. And when I look at this, he's delivered nothing. So where to from here for us in terms of State 35 and State Highway 2 as a district? We keep pushing. Um, that's our role as uh, governor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.
with the change of government, you know, there might be some change in, in that direction. However, the previous direction was that um, enabling um, works associated to road networks that are supported by spatial planning will be um, a great avenue to support more uh, investment from into those areas. There's a few things in the role that we can continue to advocate for uh, those specific areas. Thank you. Because, um, you know, if I look at one part of down Waikawa down our road, it's down one lane and it's been like that for two and a half years and that was caused by the, the slash that come down off the of parachute. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and our people just live with it. And um, we get no support from Mr Spears himself. Um, and I suppose the other thing, which is a stat that we all be made aware of, um, if that stat is correct, is 50% um, or or around 50% of all Tauranga harbours or wharfs exports or their ports exports come from the Eastern Bay. So could that be pointed out to Mr Spears himself, the importance of our roads? It's to that. been pointed out. Um, yeah. And it's also been pointed out. Yeah. Um, uh, regional Council, numerous times. Yeah. Nah, no worries. Most Thanks. of their traffic travels through yeah. our, our town and through our stock banks. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. uh, Mr Spears spoke at the um, Dome 2 recently. Can you the challenges they're facing, we have to do more with this money, um, yes. like everyone. Yeah. Um, the Spears needs support from the central government to deliver these things. Thank you. Thanks for following up, Tuesday. Okay, all those, uh, any other questions? Oh, I moved it, sorry. I'll second it. Any other questions? No other questions? All those in favour? Aye. Against? Thank you. And uh, I think some of your questions probably flowed into the next one. Regional Gates Committee meeting last oh, February. Skip the page. I'll, I'll move this one. <laughs> I've never seen the difference. Thank you for reading because he didn't think down. He didn't think you want to touch on him. It's actually, um, it was actually quite nice. This is one of the few meetings we've actually had. A, uh, we often don't have a police representation here, but it was nice to have them. Um, they've been tuning up a bit more regularly at these meetings because they're key part of our, our transport uh, network. Can just be face? Uh, motion. That's right. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. I know it doesn't look like much when you see it here. I'll have to attend a few other things. Any questions there? The um, Elton Z Zone 2 meeting was the one where. We had a presentation from uh, Mr. Spears and we spoke quite a bit of the challenges they're facing. Mm -hmm. and are they just really looking at those uh, speed limits, are they? Are they revoking some of them or what's the. Sorry, the. Speed limits. Uh, I'll move this report on the second up. Yep. And, and yeah, look, they are. So, All right. The funding is probably going to be pulled back on things like um, like barriers. Um, yeah, they're looking at not funding some of the restrictions and, and overturning some of the speed speed limits. But so at the moment, the draft um, government policy statement for the transport, which um, provides the direction, the national direction. 
There have been a shift in funding associated to more maintenance, uh, pothole responses, uh, more along the lines of maintaining the, the network, whereas the previous statement uh, was had a large focus on road to zero safety. Um, so there has been a shift in direction of the changing government. Questions at any? Oh, big thank you for showing up for attending the um, was the place for the day. Um, the opening of the new campus, fantastic result having that in the main street. Um, I think it adds to the uh, it adds to the what we already have down there. Um, yeah, so it's going to be nice seeing that being utilised and. Uh, Bringing a few people maybe in, in, in you know, after hours with us. So thank you for attending this. Right. I'll put that in. Um, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Thank you. Page 55. Uh, I may have thing. I'll move this up. Um, Everyone, second it. Would you like to um, talk through? Yeah, we know that um, if we be able to have completed the calls by the end of April, that's their plan. And the uh, bridging will continue to July until the warp upgrades. Hopefully, the warp upgrade and the uh, bridging will. Both be completed at the same time. We'll see how much of that's in there. Yeah, so that is pretty exciting. There's a little bit, we do have a little issue with that the Coast Guard at the moment. We can't seem to come to a compromise about a building a multi purpose boat ramp. They seem for some reason hell bent on building their own boat ramp. But we need to get together with them and have a thought out. Over that program issues is going to in this in this report with applying for a, a separate program for the public and also the consent has been given to the Coast Guard to build a full day Coast Guard um, ramp, which I've done a way down there at the moment. Watch this for them. That was other council meeting, doesn't it? So, yeah, you know, all the consensus and the council still has to agree. Yeah, so we need to agree to that. Is that what we've done? How much more? I don't know. We've had to meet and see if we can have enough of those coming up before I go into school as I have that in the program. We were suggesting that. I think that needs a lot of work to be done. Especially if we don't want to go forward, because otherwise, I think we're going to move on. That needs to be done by. Yeah, through the chair, um, yeah, staff are working with um, Coast Guard and the uh, Harbour Development Team and all your multiple operators to make sure that we're covering all the bases uh, associated to operating on the site. Also asked to ensure that we look at how the site would work uh, during construction of the wharf upgrade and post, take into consideration all the users. But what we're on, we've got you know, local recreational fish people, we've got Muscle boats potentially coming to be in there as well as the coast guard. So it's important that that was all considered um, through this process. And also, in terms of the coast guard, there is a requirement for council to sign up on a lease arrangement for the land. So that's currently being worked through. Will that come to council for yes. approval? Yes. I think it's a win win situation there just to be sorted out. But other than that, uh, yeah, so with him pulling out on um, the end of April, is that the case? People pulling out the construction company end of April, and just something to be a, a small contingent doing the greeting. So we're getting there, people, we're getting there. Pretty exciting. Thank you, Claire.
Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'll take the uh, report as read, however, to provide a brief introduction. Uh, the report seeks to an endorsement of the draft budget for the 2024-2034 LPP. This will allow staff to complete the underlying documents and to develop the consultation documents and meet our legislative requirements and our timelines. Um, the process commenced last year. It has been extensive and challenging, and I'd like to thank elected members and staff for their engagement in the process. I would also like to thank the community uh, for their feedback and engagement um, with this matter of importance, and I encourage continued engagement with Council on any matters of importance. After a direction from elected members, uh, the rate burden is reduced from 34% down to 10.5%. Uh, this included a direction to reduce operating budget in specific areas of the business. As outlined in the report, the reduction in operating budget will be spread across engineering services, planning and regulatory community services and development groups. Uh, this is a change in direction since the meeting held on the 7th of February with the inclusion of engineering services. The inclusion of engineering services was a result of continued workshops with Council and receiving direction to explore engineering services to balance the impact of service level reduction. This also took into consideration community feedback. As a result of the change in direction, the report seeks to revoke the previous direction made at the 7th of February Council meeting and endorse the new direction and draft budget for the 2024-2034 LTP. Thank you. Before we have any questions, I'll, I'll move this spot in a second, please. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to thank, thank all the hard work that's gone into it. It's been a long process. Um, a lot of work for the staff, so thank you very much for everyone that's contributed to this and the councillors going through. Um, yeah, it's been a challenging a challenging ask when we first saw that figure of 34.5%. Um, I just wanted to go fishing, so um, I've come a long way. I'll hand it over. Any questions? I just um, sorry through the chair. Just a point of clarification to your yeah. earlier question, uh, Councillor Kemener. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. staff received feedback from elected members on the fourteenth of December uh, in relation to the areas to explore for service level reductions. That included library, eyesight, regional economic development, and parks and recreation. Subsequently, at the workshop on the 18th of December, um, staff presented a range of options, which included indicative impacts of service level reductions at the library, which was stated at 20 hours per week. Um, we received feedback from elected members at that time that we would like to also explore uh, combining the eyesight and library to see if there was more efficient ways to manage that. Uh, on the 30th, the workshop at the 30th of uh, January, we presented a range of options to elected members, <coughs> which included um, combining the eyesight. It also included no service level reductions, and it also included the original two options that were proposed at the 18th December workshop. Um, from the outcome of that, the direction from elected members was to uh, not proceed with combining the eyesight and library as a result of not receiving the, the cost savings that had hoped. Um, subsequently, the direction was included in the report to council on the 7th, which included the reduction in hours at the line. I just thought it was important just to clarify the process that had been and um, the, the uh, direction that was received. Thank you. Sorry. The, I just want to reiterate those cost savings in year one. It would have been achieved potentially in two, three, and further. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Um, so, sorry, Stace, uh, this, um, so I won't go into the thank yous because um, the mayor's really thanked everyone for the work, and we know that the work's, a lot of work's gone into this. Um, 
So, but what I want to ask is, with this, this goes, does this go out to public consultation now? Yeah. So, uh, if the direction is endorsed today, yep, um, it allows us to um, develop the budget, underlying documents, and also finalise the consultation document, which will go to formal consultation with the community in June. Um, the importance of getting the direction is to ensure that what we go out to the community with um, is in line with the direction from the council. So my next question will be, once it's all done and the public have been, the community have been consulted on, and if they come back with any recommendations, is there room to make changes? Um, there would be some room, but not. We wouldn't be able to start again because the timelines are just too tight to meet our further requirements. So it's important that we get the direction correct now. Yep. Um, go out to the community um, with a couple of options. One would be you know, service level reductions or not. No. And so there'd be three main options. So we'll work through that with the local members to determine what the other document looks and it needs to be in line with legislative requirements and it needs to be clear and articulated articulated in a way that is easy to understand for the community. Okay, thank you. And I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the processes, I appreciate the timeline, the time restraints and everything. But what I don't appreciate is um this is a, to me this feels like a tick the box exercise where um, you know we'll, we'll We've already made up our mind. We're now going to the community. That's what we'll what that's what we're going to come up with. This is what we'll put them up with. But please consult with us. But really, your ideas mean nothing to us because we've already made our mind up. That's what it feels like to me. And I'm not okay with that. So I don't know whether we can moving forward. If there's a way that we need to change the the processes or the way that the council um, do things, because I was elected here um, from the code. Yeah. To look after the best interests of our people, and I feel that this process isn't from the best interests of our people. It feels like what's, and I, and I don't want to downplay the roles that all the council staff have done, and to, to get this document, uh, I'll get us to the stage. But um, I just feel we're doing what's easiest for us to match timelines with, whether it's with for whatever reason. We need to be serious about taking our communities, um, use I suppose, and give them a better better opportunity really rather than presenting them with this and that's it. Yeah, I hope um through the process elected members have been engaging with the community to get their views to provide them mm. through the workshops that we've had with you. Mm. So you can uh, provide that directly within the process. Um the formal consultation process is one method that is legislated for us to follow. However it's not the only method only method and the only direction that is utilized to get your views and, and feedback. And, and I hope that you as elected members and you would know the areas of the community that you engage with um, and have brought that to the table when we've gone through this process at workshops. Um, yes, you're correct. But I do know that we, have, we do actively engage with our communities. But I also know that I specifically asked you that when we get to this, this date today, is there going to be public consultation where they get to have an input? So now you're telling me telling us that um, that process should have happened with us communicating with them throughout that workshop stage. No, what I'm saying is that to get to this point, uh, we need some direction. On stuff. So then we've got something to go out to the community. With. That's where we've landed now. The consultation, formal consultation process in June will still be an opportunity for the community to provide feedback on what is proposed. So I'll go back That's to where we would, get, we would get opportunities to understand how they feel. I'll go back to my question I asked earlier. So when we get to that stage, is there room for movement in this if there's, if there's some issues that are tabled by the community? Well, when it's all finished and we've heard all the recommendations from the, the feedback from the communities, you will have the decision to, to implement it. Um, that'll be when you take on board the um, concerns or um, raise other people's concerns. So you will have that ability to... So the, the process, the process, um, yeah, it's a long one, mm. and, and it is something we should be engaging with our communities, um, just just like we heard today. Mm. But also, you you have an obligation to go and engage with community as well. Yeah, yeah so which, which we all done. Just lastly, for me, then, so 
when I read the subject on this endorsement or final direction for budget for long-term plan, when I see the words final direction, once we endorse this today, that's the final direction. You know, and like, there's a lot of people in the community that will read that and how interpret that, how I've interpreted it. So that there's, oh, here's the council again, just coming for a tip of the box exercise and our views mean nothing. So, um, yeah. But that's, that's my 50 cents worth. Yeah, I hope um, through the process you realise it's not a tip the box. It's been challenging, it's been involved, um, and we've we've had a number of um, discussions through workshops to try and get direction. And it's really positive to see the community engaging in the process and giving us feedback based on the direction. Um, you know, as I mentioned in the introduction, we encourage that and we encourage that to continue to help provide and for you information to, to make informed decisions. And there will be opportunities at the end of this process to do that. There'll be feedback from the community, there'll be hearings, mm -hmm. and there'll be an opportunity for yourselves to take that on board uh, and, and incorporate some of that in the final decision. Sorry, this is my last thing, sorry. Um, <laughs> in your executive summary, the second point there, you've got between the 8th of February, 12th of March, you know, council received feedback from members of the public. For me, that's misleading because that says that employers said that um, the public consultation process has already been run, whereas that isn't the case. Mm. So, yeah. so that relates to, to obviously pre consultation on the LTP process, and it also relates to in each of the reports, there's outlined a significance and engagement report. So, for example, the report that went to council on the 7th of February had a significance engagement of Court Hill, which encourages the community to provide some feedback, provide response associated, and that's what's important. Thank you. Thank you for the 10.5% too. <laughs> yeah, we'll, just, we'll just do this side of the room. Oh, so I just want to make a statement. Like, I suppose through this process, I'll be looking for more so um, service less political efficiencies and not reductions. I think there's a bit of depending on the detail, as Councillor Brooks sort of says, you know, so that's my five cents. That's what I'll be looking for. I mean, and it's slashing and burning, it's more about how do we make this feel efficiently. Yeah, yeah just backing up Max and here. Um, what I just try to say is like if, if we put this to the public, the public give us really push back on something, we're just hoping there is enough time to make a decision or change to go with um, what they're asking. We, we will not be going back out in another process. No, no, I'm saying that, but, uh, but, but the feedback that comes back in. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, yep. And just and just be aware on this ten and a half percent that we're looking at, it is an average. Just everyone understand that it is an average. It is not everyone does not pay the full ten and a half percent. Depends on the evaluation. Thank you. Yes, I, I what concerns me is when you ask about well okay. <laughs> the, the, there's no options. It should be, I believe it should be free, and people should be able to make the comments on what they believe is the, uh, the burning issue for them. Because if you give people it's either option one or option two, that to me is, is, is not democracy. Um, but the only other thing I'll make a quick statement here, the only other thing that's come out of this, I think, um, even though there's a lot of misinformation gone around, um, unless we've got the community having a talk and I think that we really put it out as a bonus because people have got quite an animal to that conference. In terms of the consultation document, um, we've got a legislative requirement and it has to be audited and signed off by the auditor. So it um, really dictates in terms of how it's structured. Yeah. Yeah, of course, if you've got option one and option two, you've got no, I don't want this. You know, you have to have somewhere they can disagree with Well, it is, it is an option. I mean, this feedback we've got, um, they have a tick, they will be, they put in new things. So you can, you can, you can put in your own version. And, and, and the direction should have come from the yeah. workshops. And a good point. The other thing is, people can comment on. A whole range of things through the consultation process. It's not restricted to that. The, the, the consultation document provides information to invoke them to be engaged and provide feedback. However, it doesn't restrict them providing feedback on.
that can provide feedback on a whole room. Yeah, just I agree with that. We'll go I'm going to be short and sweet because basically I endorse everything that's been said prior. Yeah, no, I disagree with I, I agree with what Steve said. Efficiency. It was never about downsizing the services. And um, when we discussed the eyesight going into the library, it was all about running these two organizations more efficiently and getting a better bang for our buck out of it. And yeah, it's, 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 it's like running a business in this in these hard times right now. Every business is trying to find more efficient ways of running their business. And we know different here. People are kind of put to pay the rates. So you know that we're stuck to doing a rock and a hard place. We're trying to be more efficient, but not do away with services. So yeah, efficiency is what should be our number one priority. That can be done more efficiently with it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, okay. The only thing that I, I would like to just start on pages, there's been a, there's been a lot of um, comments sent forward um, or feedback, but that's not part of the consultation, is it? That's separate. It will be separate to the formal consultation process, but can be consider those to be included. In okay. The they get, they, they do get included. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Just okay. making sure. It will be included in that final topic. Right. Thank you. You're precious? Well, I just said one more. Not, not, not a question, just a question. Cool like you know what? Our consult with Mana Pinawa. The effects on Mana Pinawa would like community, community to be added into that. Had a goal, community, one of them was community. So that, that's, what it's, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And those other reports as well. I don't know if that's community well being Yeah, I, I, I think we can't get enough on the monthly. We're doing yeah, what, right. we, what, what we have to do. Um, it may change in the future. These places may change. Who, who knows what they're going to do? And he may not have to include the stuff. I think it's for the system. It's obvious to have in there. But it's just a really neat stuff. It needs to be just to clarify because the community, what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
It's the final draft, is it? Can you help me out there? It's the final draft that goes out for consultations. We can't, but we can't. So this is about paying this is the last time we yeah. will the budget so, so you can actually move forward to merge consultations. For the budget to confirm, we can't do that. I, I hear what you're saying, mm. but I think that is the right moving <clears throat> for this situation. Yep. You comfortable with that? Yep. We'll leave it as is? Yep, leave it as. Okay, I'll put this to the any other. Okay. All those in favor of the regulations? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Page 113. What can we have a second? And we'll hand it over to one. Uh, good morning, councillors. Um, the purpose of the report today is to present the rates, commissions, and postponement policies for adoption for the purpose of public consultation. Uh, these, uh, this policy has gone to the Risk and Assurance Committee for comment, and a few changes have been made on that basis. Um, I'll take the report and the policies as read, and anyone has any questions. There's a couple of things to put up on this. Um, can you tell me what triggers the rate of the reuse collection? Uh, we generally start the process um, once someone has missed payment by the penalty date. Um, the penalty date is established in our um, rates resolutions. Um, Should that not be here? Uh, I don't think it's necessary. Um, we're generally looking at rates, permissions, and postponements here within the policy. This doesn't deal with our debt management. Can you never be There's no recovery component in here other than the fact that it's on page 123, it tells you about penalties and then back to the rates. We've got so I've been what we really need to look in here, that we said we could look at this place and so trees in the series that I mentioned, but that's maybe actually coming in. And then the recovery options were if you don't well, this is the process that we can follow. So that if, if we do have someone that's um employed by Council or whoever it happens to be, uh, uh, some other group or whatever. That at least they can follow the policy, and if there be a question or challenge, they can say, Well, it's in the policy, this is done following the policy. This, this was a question we raised with the risk and assurance meeting. We yeah. went through this. Uh, I was that's correct, day. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I just this is done in the final. Uh, I've been so just as a response to that, Councillor Brooks, I understand your concerns there. Um, my point to that would be, yes, that's something that we do want to address. Um, this policy is not the place for that. Where is that? Where is the policy? Uh, I, we, the debt management generally sits in terms of our process, so Council does have an obligation to collect all our standing rates. Um, so it would come back to resource and focus the organization, and if that's considered a priority, well, I, yeah. I, I didn't say, but I, I mean, I just think it is a priority because our packs wouldn't be as high if we could get some of this stuff back in. 
can't get it back in, then we should follow a process to do it. So you know, that's my we'll just we'll just speak to a questions and we'll have it. Yeah, yeah, that's how that yeah. any other questions? Yeah. Well, uh, one question for me. Um, both options that are presented today, the last three words on both options are for public consultation. Have you got any examples where changes have been made as a direct result of public consultation? Uh, not for this policy. Um, however, these policies we are required to undergo public consultation, and so we don't have a choice not to if we wanted to change them. So no examples at all, even outside of this policy? Not off the top of my head, no. Thank you. Yes. Other questions? No, he's like Councillor Book said, if we ever paid this year, we wouldn't be in the position we're in, really. So, um, we can get people to pay their share. Uh, we're only got a small rate taken in the year, rate, rate payers, so um, that would have to sell a lot. So you try to get that money, and that's just put out there, but try and do something. So you, you're recommending that we need a workshop as a game? In relation we, to debt management? Yeah, because um, debt, there's more, there's more pressure on workers now than ever. But it's an, it could be an increasing situation we're going to be in. This rate's been paid. Yeah, so I think um, if council is looking to consider rate supportability, uh, the next place to look at that is within the financial strategy, which is the next underlying document that we will be shopping with councillors um, in the coming weeks. So we can certainly be discussing that aspect of it with the workshops. Any other questions? Thank you for that time. There was two options there. Can I watch one and option two? Um, Received the report. Did any change? Anyone want to change anything? Lee? You're, you're okay to vote on that? One option. One option. Yeah. Opt in one is recommended. Recommended one. I'm happy to run. One four. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Very no. right. right. Against? Gary, thank you. Oh. Well, this one, if I can leave a second, please. Then I'll hand it over to the Thank you. Um, so, this is another one of the underlying policies that Council is required to adopt prior to the long term plan. Um, so, the Treasury of its management policy um, was set down the grounds for how. Council of its debt and treasury function. Um, there have been some minor changes to the policy, primarily looking at separating the um, policy aspects of it from the procedures into a separate procedures manual. Um, this policy also went to the Western Assurance Committee for um, the input and there were a few changes made on that basis. The primary one being to include um, or clarify the ongoing reporting requirements in relation to departures from policy. 
This policy, uh, unlike the previous, does not require public consultation. So the recommendation here is simply to adopt the policy. Uh, I'll take the report and policy as we look for any questions. Thank you. Any questions? On the uh, security, which um, is that you take a feature over the security of um, your borrowed investments, and then you can um, take council assets as well. Are there any assets that um, are taken as security? No. Generally, we don't and wouldn't look to um, use council assets as security um, with the best of the trustees, which establishes security over them. Effectively, the ability of council to set rates is the primary security of the council. Yeah, well, like, can the council get rated for the um, interest rate? Well, yeah. So, ODC has not looked to get a credit rating. Um, the compliance um, and the cost of getting the rating itself for us wouldn't result in a saving that would outweigh the actual cost of that work. So, uh, yeah, we can't get unrated council. Which means we borrow a slightly higher margin in those mm. rated councils. But it would only be once our debt hits the 60 to 80 million dollar amount that we may consider getting a credit rating. If you get a really good rating, then your um, liquidity premium gets lower, doesn't it? So then your margin's less in yeah. borrowing money. Yeah, I think the challenge is the cost of that rating and associated compliance work is on the Order of 30 to 4,000 a year. So, so the savings would have to be greater than that for it to be Any other questions? on page 24. Recommendations is out. All those in favor? Wait, I don't think against. Uh, this report is regarding adoption of the property strategies. We have developed this strategy to form a council approach to the strategic management of its property portfolio. The strategy will ensure council property has a consistency of principles, objectives, and processes to guide property decisions through the acquisition, lease, management, or disposal of council properties. Feedback has received and implemented from managers and engineering parts of the urban property, and the strategy has been put and received feedback from executive leadership from the and the property advisory groups. The strategy went to the strategy planning and recipe committee on the February of 19th, and they resolved to recommend the council to adopt that. Any questions? Any questions for? This is on page one to one. Article six. This is right. We received the report from the council adopts the um, policy strategy attached. All those in favor? Against? Thank you. Move this next one. Move the second one, please. Page 176. 
Thanks, policy, Jordan. Thank you. Shall we stick with the suit? Okay. I'll do that. Starting the process of developing a testament counter, which will be a question of procedures outlining councillors' relationship and interactions with the players in terms of practice and consistent practice. Through the creation of this, the advent of a council complaint policy was identified and the draft policy has been created. The purpose of the complaint policy is to provide a set, clear set of principles and processes for how council managers do banks. It provides councils the definition of a complaint and explains the roles and responsibilities, as well as clearly setting out a timeline for customers and staff relating to complaints. It is an accountability policy. The Strategy Planning and Regulatory Committee received the complaint policy on February 19 and provided feedback that the procedure should include an acknowledgement sent within one working day when the complaint is received. This has been added to Section 4.1 of the policy. The committee resolved to recommend council the adoption of this policy. Yeah. Anyone got any questions? Yeah. Um, because I noticed that we've got any more principles, we've got we can have that one working day. Um, it's just got time in this point. But then again, uh, the fact that we've got the 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 back in four point one that it's got in twenty four hours and working day. What does concern me is that we think about formal uh, and writing, etc. Uh, that concerns me because sometimes people don't want to put it into uh, a formal writing. So we need some sort of flexibility there. Or it's like this feeling that sort of, you know, because some people have a lot of writing. I asked what the question was, though. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying it's got to be a concern, concerning writing for formal complaint. Okay. As opposed to that, 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 that thing is what I'm asking. If somebody wants to make a complaint but they don't want to provide it in writing but provide the details to somebody else, that can be done and it can be written. The writing is to uh, gather the information that we need to go through a formal process. Yeah, but I noticed in the policy it turns around and says basically if you um if you don't put it in writing, it goes into a just a note. Is that wrong? Yeah. It just seems to me that it's, I don't know what we're going to know. Those were a formal investigation process of complaint without having the details of that complaint. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just want to write writing or verbal. Yeah. Yeah. So if we get a verbal complaint from a, a resident or a member of the community or whatever, about a certain council worker or whatever, aren't we meant to go straight to you, Stacey? Well, this is a complaint from, like, it's, it says, say if someone complains to me about something, could be anything. The benefit of this policy, I go straight to you. The benefit of this policy provides clarity and a consistent approach to how we manage the plan. Um, it, it gives clarity to the community that. What the process is when a when a complaint is lodged. At the moment, there is uh, a lack of a complaints policy like that. That gives that clarity around how the complaints are managed, and that this brings that. Tom was talking about a, a verbal complaint. For us to have a, a structured approach to be able to go back and look at history and track and, and actually explore that and investigate the complaint, um, we need information on and well, that and writing. It's not the information on. Yeah, we can actually you turn around and say, I want it in writing, and you turn around and say, the type of Yeah, so as I said earlier, if we get somebody who's not capable of writing a written complaint, they can be supportive to do that. Yeah, that's not so, so if it's a phone call, it can still be in writing. Was that just really yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Or okay, one well, Oh, very good. So just in appendix one, it says the source is three days acknowledged and acknowledged and uh, sorry, acknowledged within three working days. Probably the same 24 hours, so they're right. Uh, sorry. Um, okay. 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 Yeah, so they need to set that update there. So we have 24 hours, we have one day, or could we just... 
Yeah, so you just go through it. You're good at manager, so not wrong. Yeah, so the initial, so if you look at 4.1 on page 184, the initial complaint will be acknowledged within one working day of receipt, and then the group manager who will be responsible for reviewing the complaints will make contact within three working days around what the process will be. So it's not an chart though. Yeah, we'll just see that. We'll just see it listening to the chart. Yeah, we'll just know. We can know. Yeah. Just from following on what Councillor Brooks said, um, just in response to your, um, like people that can't do a written complaint. Um, how does that support look to you? You said that they can be supported. How does that support? It will depend on what support it means. So if they bring up and say, I can't do it writing, we could provide that support. It might be about somebody from their father supporting them, or it might be something that. that. It's not okay. say specifically what it would be. So, yeah, so what we are, we are I'm assuming Council of Books is going to be off, I think, um, if someone just rings in, like, are they going to get that immediate support for someone to take all those details over the phone? So I think the point to make is this is not about a service request. Yep. This is, if you look at the definition of what the complaint is, it's around specific things. Mm. So it's not a service request or about something that hasn't happened when it was meant to. Mm. It's about something different. So it's quite a separate process. Mm. That's what we've tried to do. Uh, um, but it might be that the service request process happens and then there's some packing papers made about that. It yeah. might be around a specific staff member. So staff do have the ability to talk. Councillors have the ability to raise something at the state and then state may make a decision about how it's be done. It doesn't, this process doesn't preempt or override that. Thank you. Got two questions. So, um, I understand it goes through the GE. Um, <clears throat> at what stage does the uh, senior, does, it, does, it, does the CEO get a summary of the complaint process? If necessary, yeah. Well, wouldn't it be good practice to? Yeah, so this will be through a, a process and it'll be an outcome process with our filing process. So within our leadership meetings, it would be something that we'd be discussing and raising. So the CEO would be aware of any complaints that have come through. That wouldn't be kept secret. Yeah, it's not about secrets, it's just about um, being informed. If the CEO is approached about something and has no idea about it, be, just I'm not talking about the whole process. Right? Thank you for that. And um, the other question is yeah. what happens when the complaints about the GM? So it goes to the next person up, which would be the chief executive. Thank you. And I reject that, that middle column also. If the complaint comes, gets a response that they're not happy with, it can come through myself. And then if they're not happy with the response that I provide, they can go to the office. Any other questions? I think it's sorry to reject. So that's what I was talking about in appendix one. If you talk in the middle, you've got the complaint received in writing, and then it passes down to the complaint and passes to group manager. Is it at that stage then that they receive an um, acknowledgement in 24 hours? Or? The 4.1 outlines that process. So, as part of that complaint received in writing, this is acknowledgement what occurred. We haven't got every single step of the process in that flow chart, but we did note to add it. Yeah, so what I'm asking though is whereabouts in that flow chart does it get added? It will get added. Straight away as soon as it'll it... get added next to or under complaint received in my time. Yeah. Can I just ask a question to the chair? Um so the complaint comes through in writing as a copy of that complaint, written complaint given to the employer or, or, or person that complaint has been made there? Uh, depends on what the complaint is and what the process is. Right? So if it becomes an employment process, 
complaint about um, staff member um, is a copy of that letter given to the staff member as well. It would, copy. it would depend on what the issue was. But it's an employment issue and an employment process would need to be undertaken, including investigation and all information around what that investigation is about would be shared with the person. But it's not, it depends on what that complaint is. Just the last one there in the green states where it says if unhappy with C review, complaint may refer matter to the ombudsman. Wouldn't you wouldn't you take the complaint back to us as councillors and see what our response was? And then we're in agreement with you, then it would go to them. We might have a different view of the, of the complaint. It's um it's it's the it's an option for the person making the complaint to utilize the services of the employer. Okay. So this is just clarifying that that is available to the complainant if they're unhappy because the outcome. If there's an issue about council decisions, that sits at council. Yeah. This is about process and council staff, which is the responsibility of the chief executive. So someone might complain about our CE to say things we ask councillors. So we we would retake that. Just say yeah, go to the, you the, the, the employer and the mayor. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll move this up really. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, my last report, policy review cycle for adoption. So following um, a recommendation from Audit New Zealand first made in 2021 and made the following year, that is develop a policy review cycle. The purpose of this is to ensure a regular review of the organisation's policies are undertaken, ensuring they remain fit for purpose and legislatively compliant. A significant portion of Council's policies have not been re re reviewed in three or more years. The implementation of this cycle will address the risk posed by these overdue policies and ensure that the backlog does not occur in the future. Risk and Assurance Committee received a policy review cycle in December 2023 and provided some points to feedback, which have since been implemented. These are detailed in the report. The Strategy Planning and Regulatory Committee received the policy review cycle on February 19 and resolved to recommend to Council the adoption of the No, so it's a policy that council owns, they're owned by the chief executive, but they're owned by the chief executive, he's going to know. It's an internal related policy. Okay, so surely that should say that. That's all I'm just, that's my own clue. I just thought it was bad. One being is one being is the other, and it's kind of what's it. Maybe it should be just an internal policy staff, but that's my own. Questions? Yeah, people there. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I just need the data to 
No further questions or recommendations on page one, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Just comment on the last three reports. Um, you know, it's, it's been uh, for us to bring structure to a number of things that we we undertake. So the property strategy, policy review cycle, and planning policy, helping to bring more structure so we can get consistent approach to the way that we do business. Bring confidence to yourself and to the community. Thank you for the staff for the work that they've put in. Okay, we'll move on to page six. Um, I'll move this on the second and I'll hand it over to the Thank you. Where's it? Um, each year we we'll see uh, feedback on the COPLAS statement of intent this year, the statement of intent 2024 2027 is one of the attachments, also the half yearly report for COPLAS. Council was a, a member of COPLAS, which was um, a council controlled organisation. And we have one mic here in the Bay of Seven Bay County Council, plus Gisborne and Kalpo. Um, an example of the benefits that are received uh, since our joining, uh, we've estimated to have saved $842,000 uh, to date. Each. Last year, uh, the estimate for our savings was 74000 $869. We pay an annual subscription of around $18,000. So the, the, there is benefit to, to the organization through the project. It's great. Um, the statement of its intent is consistent with previous. The main focus is joint procurement and shared services. Um, yeah, happy to take you. Just, just, just probably in, in something that suits her, I don't know. That suit her. You know what I mean? Yeah. If it suits us, look, we're a massive big city. Yeah, it suits your point there. Some some of the initiatives we will often, some of the initiatives we will often. We can update. Eight hundred thousand plus is not reasonable, is it? Probably didn't have the facts. Yeah. No more questions. Uh, recommendations. Uh, report. Uh, recommendations on page two hundred six. Thank you for that. Uh, all those in favour? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Put it there, please. I'll move this, but never second it, please. Oh. I don't know who's prepared the report, but um, she can't make it in today. Um, so it's pretty stock standard, looking for our funding applications again, so we can find out the stores. Any questions?
category, we just find the same people we did last year. Um, yeah, so we applied to last year. Yeah, pretty much the same funds. There's one new one in there, which is the one foundation. So we've just signed up to be able to apply for funding through them as well. So that's a new one. Okay. Right. Okay. Who was the one foundation? Uh, they're based in Bolsador, okay. and they were one that we weren't really aware of before. More cost them. Again, trust. They were gaining trust. Um, I'm not sure if they're gaining trust actually. They, they are. They are. Hmm. We can be exalted. Oh, very good. Run by um, Monty Press and Sister. Thank you, Lex. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jeff. What sort of uh, funding that you have to sort of go early. Mm, we'll try to gain around between 50 to 60,000 if we can to run the Yeah, we've got a whole lot. So yeah. I mean, if we get all of it, it could be up to 100. But, oh, yeah. yeah. So it was just like, to... yeah. but it's all subject to uh, quotes and funding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you apply like 100% for each event or does? Council need to put a certain percentage in to get those fence up and running. Um, yeah, so we've got the budget for events that we're currently running off, um, and it's probably about 20% council funding. So each event, council has to put 20%, is that what you're saying, or? Uh, just overall for the... Overall. For the whole year. Staff time, resources. Further questions? Thanks for that. Um, recommendations on page 239. Move this one, if I can have a second of this. Sorry. And I'm happy with the recommendations. We'll vote on that. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so we'll move on to page two four three. Um boxes up there. I'll move this one if I can have a second update. Oh, yep. Pass the next one. I'll hand over to the Thank you, Your Worship. Um I I just would like to highlight a couple of things. You see in, in there are a number of um activities I've been involved in which relate to three waters. Um, since uh, the new government has been elected, there has been a change in direction in terms of three waters um, with the repeal of the water entities legislation. Um, so there had been uh, an increase in activity around what does that mean for the sector. Um, so there are two, um, there is new legislation that's proposed to become one around uh, the provision of council controlled organisations and water plans and water plans are in relation to how councils can operate three waters sustainably into the future. Um, so once the legislation has been drafted, we will have more clarity on what that means for us. Um, so it's just really bringing the attention that although the repeal um, has been passed, there is still a lot of work and uh, a lot of uncertainty, shall I say, in the space of three waters. And I will continue to engage with the process and provide updates to the elected members as we get more clarity on the process. Just on that essays, I mean, previous council, councillors and previous council staff, present included, probably need a little pat on the back in the, in the sense that we have always kept up with, with our infrastructure computers, what you're seeing on TV about other councils around the country. I mean, some of them are horrendous. So, you know, the old um, little Pokey District Council has done well over the years. I mean, two other freshwater ponds that we operate as well. So, yeah, I think that's a bit of a number. Enough for our little community. It still is. 
Any some of the some some counts are like they've got a nightmare on their hand. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's not unusual. I can think of two councils our size that have I think five or six treatment plants. Uh, and you can want to think of how you could fund that. <clears throat> so the three waters, although it's been appealed, it's uh certainly hasn't gone away. Yeah. It's good to see that our staff have always kept, you know, present staff and crew have always kept on top of it. So, well done. Yeah. Recommendations on page two, three. Highlights for you. Right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Aye. 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 Oh, it's always one day. Excuse me. We're <laughs> still on our agenda. Sorry. Please, please. We'll move on to page 24. I know some um, one of our reporters' favorite items. You're welcome to come back for lunch shortly. Um, Tom, got a question for you. No, I moved it. All those in favor? Aye, aye. Oh, sorry. Come, do, come, do come back for lunch if you want. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah, quite, quite a bit of recess, please. Oh, no, no, just, just, just a break. Just have five minute break. Yeah. Oh,